Gonna see, what if Naruto was the hidden genius of the leaf? Part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. Twelve years ago a great tragedy befell the great village of Kanahagakur, or better known, as the village hidden in the leaves. What was this tragedy? Simple, the nine-tailed demon fox suddenly appeared and attacked the village in a rage. However this came as a shock to some, as they knew that the fox was sealed away in Kishina Uzumaki, and that the fox wasn't was evil, as everyone thought it was, so for it to suddenly show up and start attacking in a rage was rather suspect and a source of worry for Kishina's condition. As well as those that were with her. And worry they should for shortly after Kishina gave birth to her and her husband Minato Namikaze, otherwise known as the Yellow Flash, and the fourth Hokage's first son Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, a strange man in an orange spiral mask appeared and killed everyone else. And managed to separate Minato from his wife by taking Naruto hostage. This allowed the man to forcefully remove the Kyuubi from Kishina, however the Kyuubi knew what was going to wind up happening due to this. And quickly sent a message out to the realm of the summoning foxes to relay what's going on to the monkeys, turtles, dogs, toads, and any other summons that Kanoha uses in hopes of making things better for Naruto after everything blew over. Not that the Kyuubi minded being sealed into the poor boy, as well Minato and Kishina were working on a plan to safely free the Kyuubi, as he wasn't a threat to Kahona and was going to go live in the summoning realm and run the fox clan. That's not to say the Kyuubi didn't do his best in fighting against the mind control and tried to break free, he did, but whoever the man was knew exactly how to control a tailed beast effectively. Something that bothered the Kyuubi greatly, as only very few people have ever managed to succeed in controlling a tailed beast, let alone him. Only Madara Chiha being the first to ever fully control him, and he died some years later, as the last person to know how to truly control a tailed beast, so how did this person know how to control him was confusing and frustrating. The noble ninja of Kahona knew none of this, as they valiantly defended their home from the mind-controlled fox. By the time Minato got Naruto ready for the regrettable sealing that he was about to do on him, nearly half of the village's forces were wiped out. Of course the Kyuubi used the situation to his advantage to take out Danzo and his route with a massive tailed beast blast, Minato noticed where the Kyuubi was aiming and let him fire his attack. But everyone else that didn't know about Root or where its base was located only saw the Kyuubi blow out a massive hole into the side of the mountain right next to the Hokage mountain. Anzo didn't know what hit him as he was vaporized along with his ambitions and schemes. He was not missed. After the Kyuubi fired its attack, Minato used the short recharge time to teleport the Kyuubi away from the village and to where Naruto was to perform the sealing, knowing that due to circumstances, it would cost him his life. Minato hoped that Kishina would make it so that Naruto wasn't alone in the world. Forgive my son Minato told Naruto as he flew through the hand seals needed for the sealing. As soon as he was done Minato shouted Reaper Death Seal. Summoning the Shinigami or the Death God who started pulling the Kyuubi's soul into Naruto, breaking the control the masked man had on him. Minato, I wish the things didn't have to come to this apologize the Kyuubi as he was being sucked into Naruto. I know I only wishes that the villagers see Naruto for who he is and not a monster for having you sealed into him, said Minato with heavy breaths. I can't guarantee that he'll stay fully human due to me being sealed into him so soon after he was born, said the Kyuubi. Any child that is born to a Biju's female container will have a high amount of their energy in them, but it'll fade away by the time they can walk and talk. However if that child is around other demons or has that same sealed into them, there is a good chance that they'll become a half-demon, explained the Kyuubi, after seeing Minato's horror-struck face. Soon the sealing was done, and the Death God took Minato's soul with him, but a higher power forced him to let Minato go to the pure world, as they knew about a certain event that was going to happen within the next two decades. The third Hokage, Saratobi Hiruzen, arrived to scene shortly to find Naruto crying on the altar that Minato summoned to perform the sealing on, as well as Minato's fallen body. Hush now Naruto, everything will be alright soothed Siratobi as he picked up the poor babe. Anbu please bring the fourth's body with said Siratobi and see if you can find out what happened to cause this to happen. I can't believe he's gone said Inu, one of the Anbu that was there. Tell me, have you found Kishina? Asked Siratobi. Yes, she's with Yureya and Tsunade at the moment, replied Inu however I don't know how well she is currently. That's good to know, hopefully she'll pull through said Siratobi now let's move out. Hiruzen Saratobi soon got himself ready for the emergency council meeting after conferring with the fire dynamo, who just so happened to be in the village during the attack, beforehand to make sure that the council didn't try anything funny like take more power than they should have. Alright, let's get to business said Hiruzen as he entered the room carrying a sleeping Naruto in his arms. Is that the demon container? Asked one of the civilian councillors. Indeed he has started Hiruzen. Then kill it. And finish what the fourth started. Yelled the councillor. 
all of the civilian and some of the shinobi counselors agreed loudly as well, how Naruto slept through it all the third had no idea. Silence. Roared Hiruzen, as he let out a large amount of his kai out at the council, making them shut up. If I may lore third, just who is the child and who are his parents? Asked Yashi Hayuga, head of the Hayuga clan. His name is Naruto replied Hiruzen, and he is the son of Minato and Kishina. Where is Kishina? I saw Minato's body on the way in, but didn't see her anywhere asked Su Minyazuka, head of the Inuzuka clan. But my apprentice currently, as she is currently in a coma answered Sanadi who was worried for both Naruto and Kishina. Any idea when she'll awaken? Asked Sum. Sadly no replied Sanadi. You're not planning on leaving after this are you? Asked one of the counselors. I am, I only came back for Kishina and make sure Naruto was healthy, answered Sanadi, but I'm going to take her with me, as I don't trust anyone but me to take care of her. But what about Naruto? Asked Hiruzen he's going to want his mother when he finds out her condition if she doesn't wake soon. That's a good point sensei, I guess until he's old enough have him grow up in the apartment complex that the Uzumaki's own, and when he asks about his parents tell him that his mother is still alive, but is in a coma at the time, and that is why she's not around suggested Sanadi. I'll stay for the first year or so, before heading back out to the field, added Jureya just to make sure he's properly taken care of, I am his godfather after all. You better not try to turn him into a pervert Jureya threatened Sanadi. Hushnia would kill me, or worse if I did that. Exclaimed Jureya, as he paled just thinking about what she would do to him for turning her son into a pervert. Alright, until Naruto comes of age or Kashina wakes up Naruto will be raised in the Uzumaki apartments, said Hiruzen. Furthermore no one is to speak about Naruto having the Kyuubi sealed into him or his parentage under penalty of death. We don't want our enemies to know what became of the Kyuubi or Minato's enemies, trying to kill Naruto for being his son. Also no harm is to come to Naruto, physical or mental, doing so will result in severe punishment, warned Hiruzen. Now let's move on to assessing the damages and counting the dead said Hiruzen. Well here's your home for the foreseeable future Naruto said Jiraiya as he arrived at the Uzumaki apartments. The Uzumaki apartments are two five-story buildings that are towards the center of Kahona, Leaf, that are at right angles to each other on a street corner. Both were white with oak wood frames and low walls separating the grounds from the road with a gate having the Uzumaki swirl over the entrance. The second building was further back with the entrance of the building lining up to the wall of the main one. When the people who lived in the buildings heard that Naruto was going to live there almost all of them moved out saying that they don't want to live with the demon container. Much to Jiraiya's ire, though there wasn't anything he could do about it, as he was hoping for Naruto to make friends with the children that lived there. Well since Naruto owns this place whatever he wants to do with the extra rooms is up to him noted Jiraiya, I should probably set up my own room at some point, for when I'm in town, seeing how my apartment was destroyed in the attack. With all my research cried Jiraiya as he crumpled to his knees and began an I'm crying while still holding Naruto in his arms. Three years later. The last few years since the Kyuubi attack have been rather quiet for Kahona. The dead were put to rest, buildings rebuilt, the Achihas being blamed for the attack, making them rather annoyed with the rest of the village. Of course there is still the threat from Kumo and Iwa lurking in the background. The Naruto's case growing up with Jiraiya so far has been interesting to say the least. Naruto was able to walk and talk by two and was a wild blur of energy that could hide pretty well a kid his age, requiring Jonin to find him. Another thing is that Naruto still doesn't know about the Kyuubi, as no one really wants to talk about it around him. During the three years both Jiraiya and Kakashi moved into the Uzumaki apartment's main building to keep an eye on Naruto better, Jiraiya on the fourth floor and Kakashi on the second. Thankfully there weren't threats to Naruto's life at this time, even though every time Jiraiya took Naruto out to play at the park, parents pulled their children away in fear and hate. Naruto of course was oblivious to this so far, which was a relief to Jiraiya and Hiruzen, as they weren't ready to tell him why the villagers didn't like him. This didn't mean Naruto didn't have any friends, as Jiraiya did take him to the clans that were on his side to play with their kids. Naruto would feel out of place when he went to the Hyugas, as they were a very strict and proper clan, not that it stopped him from going there most of the time, as he really enjoyed Hinata's company. This leads to current events, as the leader of Kumoe has sent a peace treaty, as well as his head ninja to sign it. This made the people of Kahona really happy, as this meant that hostilities would end, and maybe even something similar to the alliance with Suna. Sadly the peace treaty was a cover for Kumo to try to kidnap a Hyuga for their special dojujitsu, the Byakugan, and create their own clan of powerful dojujitsu users. Of course while the head ninja was in Konoha he had dinner with all the clans leaving the Hyuga's last so he could kidnap a Hyuga child and leave right away. What he didn't count on was Jiraiya being in town at the time making the mission all the harder to complete. 
Now Naruto don't forget to be on your very best behavior tonight warned Jiraiya as he led Naruto to the Hyuga's clan compound. Why? Asked Naruto who was too excited to notice the glares he was getting. Because Kumo's head ninja will be there tonight before he heads back home to his village answered Jiraiya. You don't think he'll try something, will he? Asked Naruto innocently. There's always a chance that might happen, it's why I'm leaving some toads behind to help keep an eye on things replied Jiraiya. When we'll get to summon a toad? Asked Naruto. When you graduate from the ninja academy answered Jiraiya I've told you this before numerous times Naruto. Welcome Lord Jiraiya said Kohayuga as Jiraiya and Naruto approached the Hayuga clan compound. Thanks not a Jiraiya no Naruto don't go bothering the Kumonin. The party in honor of the peace treaty soon took place after Jiraiya dropped Naruto off. During that time Naruto spent most of the party staying back and hanging out with Hinata and her cousin Niji. The Kumonin did notice Naruto but didn't think much of him being told that Naruto was just one of Hinata's few friends form outside the clan when he asked about him. So Niji, how's your training going? Asked Naruto. I've just started not that long ago Naruto but father says I'm making great progress replied Niji. I wish I could learn the gentle fist whined Naruto. Only those that have the Byakugan can effectively use the gentle fist said Niji. Right you three, time for bed said Hisashi, Niji's father and Hinata's uncle. But I'm not tired whined Naruto just before letting out a big yawn. Right off to bed, now said Hisashi Niji stay with him just in case. Of course father complied Niji. Later that night after everyone had gone to bed the Kumonin snuck into the Hyuga compound to kidnap Hinata. Little did he know that there were two others in her room or that Jiraiya had some toads keeping an eye on him for anything funny. I don't know what's so special about these eyes, I mean they haven't even noticed me whispered the Kumonin to himself. The man quickly found Hinata's room and snuck in through the window and grabbed her and ran off, not noticing that he had also grabbed Naruto as well as they both fell asleep in each other's arms. Niji who had to use the bathroom at the time came back into the room and saw that his cousin and Naruto were missing. Father. Uncle. Hintada and Naruto are missing. Yelled Niji as he ran towards where his father slept. What? Yelled Hiashi and he burst out of his room. It's true when I got back to the room after needing the bathroom both of them were gone and the window wide open explained Niji. Stay here while me and your father go looking for them said Hiashi who was livid. Meanwhile the Kumonin suddenly realized that he had picked up another child when Naruto woke up and noticed the situation he and Hinata were in and yelled out and began to struggle, waking Hinata in the process. Help. Somebody got me and Hinata. Fuck. How the heck did I miss picking up another twerp, swore the Kumonin no matter could always use more ninjas. Naruto's scream alerted all the nearby ninjas as well as the toads to what was going on and their location. Lord Jiraiya that Kumonin took Naruto, as well as Hinata, why he did I'm not sure, Kumo doesn't know about him having the Kyuubi sealed into him or who his parents are informed his Ashi. I'm not sure either, but he's going to regret taking my godson I can promise you that said Jiraiya. As the Kumonin kept running Naruto used his position to punch the man square in his family jewels as hard as he could. Forcing the man to drop him and Hinata in pain. You know what I was just going to keep running and leave you two alone, but now I'm going to make you pay for that snarled the Kumonin as he went for a kunai knife. I won't let you take us. Yelled Naruto in defiance. Like you have a choice brat snarled the man as he went to make his move, only to be stopped by a swift punch to the face by an enraged Jiraiya who said I think differently. Now we'll see just your little game was said Hiashi as he used the 62 palms on the man to knock him out, but due to how angry he was instead killed him. This is going to not end well, noted Jiraiya. With him dead, instead of alive we can't find out what Kumo's plan was. Plus A can deny everything as well. Forgive me Lord Jiraiya, I guess in my rage I wasn't thinking clearly enough to not kill him apologized Hiashi. Come on, let's get these two back home safe said Jiraiya as he picked up the two children. Yes let's agreed Hiashi as he took Hinata into his own arms, I'm glad Naruto has just a strong set of lungs on him to let us find them so easily. Indeed, I suspect Naruto is going to want to start his training after this so he can protect those precious to him better said Jiraiya as the two men started walking home. Hinata as well, though I fear she may not perform as well as Niji due to her kind nature, replied Hiashi. Who knows, but I've got to get back out into the field soon said Jiraiya if I was I could have kept this from happening in the first place. Maybe, but you have helped ease some of the tension of the Achihas while you've been here noted Hiashi. True, but we still don't know who took control of the Kyuubi that night, and, as far as we know only an Ichiha can develop that kind of ability, said Jiraiya at least I know which families are in the clear so far, but with so many it's hard to clear them all. Yeah it's late I wish you good night and good luck said Hiashi as he broke off towards his home. 
Gureya was correct in thinking that Naruto would want to start his ninja training after that night. Of course being only three Jiraiya had him start with very light exercises and learning how to read and write, as well as other important things he would need to know, like maths, science, and how to take care of himself. Now Naruto I'm going to be leaving soon to manage my spy network and make sure something like what happened with that Kumonin doesn't happen again alright, Jiraiya told Naruto after a hard day of teaching him how to read and write. But I don't want you to go. Cried Naruto. Don't worry, Kakashi will be here to watch over you while I'm gone assure Jiraiya plus whenever I'm in town I'll come visit you. Okay, said Naruto sadly. But don't you worry I'll make you proud. I'll learn everything there is. Good to hear, just be careful, as not everyone will be so keen on teaching you things like me or Kakashi warned Jiraiya. Then I'll be extra sneaky about it. Announced Naruto that way they'll never catch me. Ha. I know you're really good at hiding Naruto, but please be careful and don't go snooping in places you shouldn't said Jiraiya. Right. Agreed Naruto. Soon after Jiraiya left to go back to the field knowing that Naruto would be safe with Kakashi living in the same building as him and all the protection seals that were etched all across the buildings by Naruto's ancestors. The year after Jiraiya left was largely uneventful, Naruto started noticing the looks people gave him and wondered why that was. In response to this he began reading all the books he could get his hands on, except for a set of little orange books that Jiraiya forbade Naruto from reading, stating that if a certain person found out, he'd be a dead man walking. Naruto's love of knowledge hasn't been hindered by the fact that the library prevented his entry, as he would sneak in after hours and read. This led him to start sneaking into the clan libraries as well to see what they might hold, not that he realized that it was wrong to do so, as he didn't know they were off-limits to non-clan members at first. Once he did he began copying the information down for his own use, as well as pillaging the trash, as most of the clans just copied their old worn scrolls and then tossed them out the night before the trash was collected. Naruto also started watching various ninjas train and picked up on a lot of and fighting styles that he wanted to learn eventually, including the shadow clone ninjutsu. Naruto had the left half from the entrance of the third floor converted into his own personal library, with the right half becoming his workroom, as Naruto became interested in learning and was very happy to learn that he could start learning that almost right away. As it requires perfect penmanship to work correctly. By the time Naruto was five he had learned the henge, as well as the shadow clone. But kept the second one secret from everyone else. Naruto also was taught some of the gentle fist, as thanks for his part in saving Hinata by Hiashi. Speaking of Hiashi things went badly for him, just like Jiraiya said they would, as A demanded his head for killing his head ninja, otherwise war would be waged. Hiashi was more than willing to give himself up, but his twin brother Hizashi took his place by his own free will. This caused Niji to become bitter and fatalistic, as well as resent both Naruto and Hinata, much to Hiashi's dismay. The day was just another day in Konoha with a now five-year-old Naruto going home from having lunch at his favorite ramen bar, Ramen Ichiraku, when he was ambushed by a large number of overly drunk ninjas and villagers. Hey looky what we found the demon out on his own sneered of the drunkards. Hey let's finish what the fourth started and end the little fiend. Shouted one of the drunk shinobi, completely forgetting that doing so would cause their lives to be forfeit as he threw a kunai at Naruto who barely moved out of the way. Leave me alone. What did I ever do to you? cried Naruto as he ran away, forgetting where his home was in his panic. Dead him! yelled the drunkards as they chased Naruto throwing anything that they could get their hands on at him as they ran. Naruto ran as fast as he could but couldn't quite avoid getting hit by some of the items being thrown at him. Naruto was soon trapped in a dead end alley with no way for him to escape. Now demon we get our revenge for what you did to us yelled one of the drunks victoriously as the large group descended upon the hapless Naruto who barely protected himself from some truly nasty injuries. As the group assaulted Naruto their numbers quickly started being killed off by an enraged Inu, Kakashi, along with his Anbu team. When the drunks noticed that they were being killed they tried to run but were stopped by the third Hokage who prevented them from escaping their fate as they had broken the law. Inu take Naruto to the hospital, as fast as you can, I'll join you, as soon as I can order here in he then thought I hope you aren't affected too badly by this Naruto. Well this was not how I wanted us to meet the Kyubi says, as he sees Naruto's unconscious form in front of him. Well this was not how I wanted us to meet, says the Kyubi now all I have to do is wait for him to awake. Where am I? Questioned Naruto, as he wakes up and sees where he is. Deep within your own mind answers a deep voice. Huh? exclaims Naruto in alarm as he turns to face the source of the voice. Kyuubi. Screams Naruto when he sees the Kyuubi behind him in a cage. Stop screaming so loud you're giving me a headache complains the Kyuubi. How are you even alive? The fourth killed you? Demanded Naruto. 
Oh come now did really believe that? Asked Kyuubi critically. Well no, I've never really answered Naruto. I've always had a feeling that it wasn't true, but if that's true then what happened? I won't go into the full details right now, but I will tell you that shortly after your birth I was ripped out of your mother and forced to attack Kahona explained the Kyuubi for you see you're the third person I've been sealed into. The first being the wife of the first Hokage, Mito Uzumaki, who then transferred me into your mother at the end of her life. Sealed into so that's why the villagers are so mean and why those men attacked me, noted Naruto it's all your fault. No corrected the Kyuubi it's the man in the spiraled mask who ripped out of your mother and forced me to attack Kahona fault, not mine. Why should I believe you snapped Naruto? Honestly I don't know why you should and you have every right to be angry with me for all the bad things that have happened to you admitted the Kyuubi that's up to you. Well tell me this, did my parents actually love me or just abandon me asked Naruto. Your parents were thrilled when they found out they were having you, as was I answered the Kyuubi sadly your father died that night, your mother on the other hand fell into a coma and is being taken care of by a distant relative of yours until she wakes back up. If that's the case, then why haven't I been told or seen them before? Demanded Naruto. The person taking care of your mother can't stand to stay in Kahona due to her having some rather bad memories of losing her loved ones to war and took her with as she didn't trust the medical staff to properly take care of her, answered the Kyuubi she was Jiraiya's teammate Sunid. Oh said Naruto in a small voice as during the entire exchange he didn't detect any lies from the Kyuubi as he was really good at detecting lies and deception. Once you awake tell the third about meeting me, as he knows that I wasn't in control that night and is trustworthy explained the Kyuubi. Did you knew all this time? Said Naruto in shock. He does, you just never ask him deadpan the Kyuubi although I will admit he never gave you any hints to lead you concluding about my true fate. After a few minutes to process everything Naruto came to conclusion that he wasn't quite sure what to make of the Kyuubi at the time and that he really needed to speak to the Hokage to get a clearer picture of his situation. Hey how do I get out of here anyway? asked Naruto. Simply focus on returning to the waking world and the same is true for when you wish to return answered the Kyuubi. Thanks, I guess replied Naruto as he began concentrating on leaving his mindscape. So how is he? asked Hiruzen once he reached Naruto's room at the hospital. He'll find Lord Hokage, none of his injuries were sever, replied the doctor of course there's his advanced healing factor that he gets from both his heritage and burden, so he was mostly healed by the time the Anbu brought him here. That's good to hear noted Hiruzen though Naruto might have met the Kyuubi due to this, I hope he isn't too upset for me, and Jiri Aya not telling him about his burden. Okage sir, do you think Naruto met you know you? Asked Inu Kakashi. There is a good chance for that to have happened, I'm just worried on how he'll react afterwards, replied a worried Hiruzen. I'm sure he'll understand sir, Naruto is a smart boy assured Kakashi probably even a genius. I'm sure he has agreed Hiruzen of course I'm sure he's going to hide it to make others underestimate him. What both Hiruzen and Kakashi didn't know was that Naruto had woken up at the start of their conversation and heard everything, so when he said you're right Jiji, I'm not going to show off my smarts and strength it gave the two men a start. Naruto you're alright said Hiruzen with relief. As well as I can be after finding out about the Kyuubi replied Naruto with a deadpan look. Both men begin to look sheepish from being called out and keeping the Kyuubi a secret from Naruto. I hope you're not upset about it Naruto, it's just that the Kyuubi has been a hard topic for us to talk about ever since that night explained Hiruzen. It's alright Jiji, I can understand why you didn't tell me about the Kyuubi said Naruto with a frown. Well what would you do now? Asked Hiruzen. Nothing different Jiji replied Naruto I still want to be a ninja and become Hokage like you. That's good to know said Hiruzen just take it easy for now and wait till you're fully recovered to start training again. Hey Naruto, are there any you know yet? Asked Kakashi. Yeah. I know the henge replied Naruto happily while keeping back he knows the shadow clone as well. That's impressive for someone your age, but is that all you know? Asked Hiruzen knowingly. Um I might have figured out how to use something called the shadow clone jutsu not that long ago, but I can only make two, but get tired from it, yet the guy I saw made like five at once with no problem. Kakashi was shocked that Naruto figured out how to use a level forbidden technique at such a young age. Naruto you are aware that the shadow clone is a level move right? Asked Kakashi. No I didn't replied Naruto with some awe on his face. Yes, and there is something else that the shadow clone does said Herzuin. What? Asked Naruto. Shadow clones have the ability to transfer all the knowledge they have gained back to their creator upon dispelling explained Hiruzen, but I suggest you get your chakra reserves up before you try using that again. But the more I use it the better I'd get with it and increase my reserves at the same time argued Naruto. He's right you know Lord Hokage added Kakashi. Alright, you can use it said Hiruzen but only under Inuzer Kakashi's watch until I say otherwise. 
Pine whined Naruto. Four months later. Soon after Naruto got out of the hospital he got to work on his chakra control and learning the other two academy jutsus, the Kamari and normal clone jutsu. All under the watchful eye of Kakashi. Hey Kakashi sensei do you think you could be my sensei when I become a ninja? Asked Naruto. I've already put in my request replied Kakashi now I've got to go take care of one more mission for the Anbu before I become a regular again. Thus be safe Kakashi Nai said Naruto. Don't worry I will, it's only a rank A mission assured Kakashi. Hey Kakashi, will you teach me something new when you get back? Asked Naruto. If you can master the other two academy by the time I get back answered Kakashi. You're on. Kakashi Nai. Exclaimed Naruto with excitement. Well good luck with that, I'll see you when I get back said Kakashi, as he left thinking of course with the amount of chakra you have, I imagine the regular clone jutsu will be very hard for you to learn. Alright, let's get started announced Naruto, as he called up 4 shadow clones, he could do up to 12, but that would leave him drained and unable to train. Alright you two work on learning the Kamari, and you two work on the regular clone ordered Naruto, while I practice with my seals. Naruto was still a beginner with seals, but he was able to make simple storage and small explosion seals. Of course for any normal kid that was nearly 6 years old that would be incredible, but for an Uzumaki that's rather normal, as the clan was world renowned for their sealing arts. Naruto headed to his seals workshop to begin practicing how to make flash seals and illumination seals, as well as a seal to instantly cook instant ramen. At the end of the day Naruto dispelled the clones and found that while he was making progress with learning the Kamari, he was getting nowhere with learning the normal clone jutsu. He also figured out how to make light come from a seal, but it was very dim and useless for what he was going for, but held on to the design in case they might come in handy someday. Naruto though did manage to create a seal for cooking purposes, just not as fast as he wanted. Alright I think that was some good work today, now for dinner and a little poking around to see what new or knowledge I can glean said Naruto as he gathered up some food to make a very simple pork and rice dinner. Later that night Naruto headed out under the cover of night wearing black clothes that had a hood to cover his blonde hair, he also wore a black mask to cover his face as well to make it harder for people to identify him. Alright let's see what I can find tonight whispered Naruto to himself as he arrived at the Nara clan compound. Naruto spent little over an hour snooping around and found a quite a few things, as Naras were one of the most lazy clans and tended to leave things out when they felt it to be too troublesome to put stuff away. What I good haul, a lot of good books and scrolls on the medicine they make, plus two technique scrolls noted Naruto when he got home and to his library, now let's see which ones they are. Alright the shadow imitation jutsu and shadow wave due to red Naruto the shadow imitation is the very base for all their other clan jutsus, while the shadow wave is an offensive one. Huh, I didn't take the Naras as the type to use offensive moves, oh well they should learn to put things away more often. Little did Naruto know the third Hokage was aware of Naruto's little escapades into the clans, but didn't say anything, as he felt that if a child could sneak into a clan and manage to swipe there, then he deserved them, as if he was an enemy he could have easily killed some of them. It also showed him just how lax the security of his village had become and needed to be fixed quickly before something bad happens. As you can see Naruto has already gathered quite a bit of knowledge from some of the other clans already here is and told Shikaku Nara, the head of the Nara clan, as he showed the man Naruto sneaking around his home with his crystal ball. This is troublesome, I'm sure Naruto will try to teach himself those moves noted Shikaku. He most likely will at some point, though he isn't going to show off that he knows the more passive his gathered knowledge to others replied Hiruzen. Man, if a nearly six-year-old can go around and sneak into various clans just to gain some knowledge off of them and succeed then our security standards must be dropping, said Shikaku with a sigh. Indeed, though your clan is the first major clan he's done this with, if you don't count the Hyuga said Hiruzen. What do you mean by that? Asked Shikaku who was intrigued. The Ashi was secretly given Naruto a couple of his clan scrolls and showed him the basics of the gentle fist as thanks for his part in saving Hinata and helping her believe in herself when the clan elders don't and tell her. As much answered here as in of course he'll deny everything if you ask him except the gentle fist part as enough people know he did that already. Well as long as he doesn't use them against us, I don't have a problem, said Shikaku. Plus I knew someone was going around taking things from the lesser clans and that they were most likely going to target my clan next, which is why I came to you. I just didn't expect it to be Naruto. Yes Naruto is quite gifted in the art of infiltration and information gathering said here is and of course he also knows that due to how the public opinion of him is rather poor, he decided to keep his true strength. And intelligence hidden except to those that he trusts to keep it a secret until when he takes part in the exams. Should I tell the Yamanaka and Kimchi clans about this? as they are my clan's closest allies asked Shikaku. 
Not yet, I plan on letting Naruto know that I'm aware of his activities and plan on having him take on some top secret missions to test our defenses with him getting paid for his work, as well as being allowed to keep anything that he finds. As long as it won't cause damage to wherever he goes replied Hiruzen. Sounds like Naruto is going to be rather busy soon noted Shikaku. Yes, and once he becomes a ninja those missions will be added to his mission records, as B-Rank said Hiruzen. Well I need to get home, I'm going to start teaching that lazy son of mine his first clan tomorrow said Shikaku, tell me how Naruto takes it when you get the chance. Don't worry I'm sure you'll figure it out assured Hiruzen with a chuckle Anbu please let Naruto know that I would like for him to see me tomorrow at his easiest convenience. Hi, Lord Hokage replied the Anbu that were hidden in the room. You wanted to see me Jiji? Asked Naruto, as he entered the Hokage's office. Yes, there is something I need to talk to you about replied Hiruzen. What? Asked Naruto who was confused. Tell me do you know what this is? Asked Hiruzen, as he placed his crystal ball in the desk in front of him. No, not really answered Naruto, though he had a fairly good idea what it did. Well this crystal ball lets me keep an eye on the village whenever I wish, and do you know what I've been seeing during the night for some time? Explained Hiruzen. Naruto's eyes went wide, as Hiruzen just told him he knew of him going into clan compounds to glean as much information as he could. Now Naruto you are aware that such behavior is very wrong right? Asked Hiruzen. No not really, Jiraiya just said not to go into places I shouldn't and the clans are fairly open to letting people go around their compound except the Hyugas and Ichihas replied Naruto sheepishly. Then why do you head into them at night? Asked Hiruzen. Because there isn't anyone to give me dirty looks or whisper things behind my back answered Naruto. Well your logic isn't very good for your actions reprimanded Hiruzen, but it does give us a unique situation for us to exploit. What do you mean Jiji? Asked Naruto. Well your actions have shown just how bad our security has gotten around the clan compounds and gives me worry for our more sensitive locations, explained Hiruzen so what I want you to do is sneak around the village, continuing what you're doing, but also to pull pranks. As a way to show how bad our security has gotten. Will I get paid for it? Asked Naruto. Yes, they'll be considered B-rank missions in terms of pay and your mission records, but they will be top secret with only those in Anbu knowing about them, answered Hiruzen with a smile. You mean I get to get back at all those stupid villagers who can't see that I'm not the Kyuubi? Asked Naruto. Yes, yes you will said Hiruzen, and with your intelligence I'm sure they'll never know what hit them. I'll do it. Exclaimed Naruto. But does anyone know what I've been doing? Besides the Anbu that personally protects me, the head of the Nara clan was with me yesterday while you were snooping around his home. Not that he minded too much as he saw the same thing I did with security and how bad of a risk it is of how easy it is to get into most of the clan compounds. Right now the two clans that are allies with them are going to be aware, complained Naruto. He hasn't told them yet on my suggestion as I told him to wait until I tell him otherwise to tell them said Hiruzen. I know my first prank victim chuckled Naruto evilly. Okami, I think he got his mother's pranking skill, and Drive thought Hiruzen with extreme worry may Kami have mercy on whoever wrongs Naruto. And boy was Hiruzen right to worry, for, as soon as Naruto got home, he started practicing on mastering the Shadow Clone, so he could pull his pranks and infiltration on a much larger scale. Three weeks later Shikaku found that all of his cloths and water was filled with an itching mixture that lasted for two days. He didn't find out who did it until Naruto graduated from the Ninja Academy. After the itching powder move Naruto waited two weeks before he started publicly pulling pranks that ranged from the simple to the elaborate and became known as a prank master of Konoha the likes that haven't been seen since his own mother when she was his age. Naruto also started sneaking into various facilities from the T&I department and Bu headquarters to the hospital and library. He also went to most of the clan compounds and managed to copy off a large amount of their history and for his own personal library. Narjuo even went as far as swiping things from visiting ninjas that were there for the Chunin exams and gained quite a bit off of them, even going so far as to go into the forest of death to loot the dead. Waste not want not and all that. By the time Naruto was six years old and ready to join the ninja academy he had learned and mastered the following. The shadow clone jutsu and could make up to 2500 clones at once, henge up to the point that his transformations became solid, shadow imitation jutsu though not, as well as anara of the same age, fireball jutsu, great breakthrough jutsu, shadow wave jutsu, kamari, mind transfer technique. And shadow kunai shuriken jutsu. Akashi also returned during this time and wasn't surprised that Naruto didn't learn the normal clone, but was shocked to learn what the Hokage got Naruto to get into pranks and encouraged his late night escapades. Naruto was happy to find that Kakashi returned from his mission unharmed successfully. But was sad when he told him that he just couldn't learn the basic clone jutsu yet. Kakashi assured him that he'll get it eventually. 
Pay Kakashi Nai, is there a way to find out my elemental affinity? Ask Naruto after he spent the day getting ready for the start of the academy the next day. You're a little young to be learning elemental manipulation Naruto, but if you really want to know I can get you some chakra paper so you can find out after school tomorrow, alright? Replied Kakashi. Okay. Well good night Kakashi Nai said Naruto, as he gave Kakashi a hug before heading back to his penthouse flat at the top of the building, it's the entire fifth floor. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like, if you enjoyed my video, see you next time, till then sayonara.